This is Alex Lennon. He's a Scottish YouTuber who creates videos about comics such as Spider-Man, Batman, you know the rest. He also makes videos about his own creations such as his comics from his childhood and also his cinematic universe that he created using one single device, a Nintendo 3DS. And I was able to interview him and it was really, really interesting. Technically, this is the second part to the Alex Lennon interview, so I'll link the first part in the description, but it doesn't really matter in which order you watch the videos, so you can just watch this first, then watch the first part later. Hope you enjoy, I'll see you at the end. I love Batman. And it you know, it made it it made it easier to to keep reading on and and really you know get the get the character. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm definitely gonna like just take this clip out of context and tell everybody that you like my video on Batman made you love Batman. I'm just gonna no. spam <laughs> this everywhere. So speaking of Marvel versus DC, I have the timeless question that everybody and their mom probably wonders about. Okay, so think about this very 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 thoroughly. Okay. Who is winning in a fight? Kite Man or Armless Tiger Man? My money's on oh, Kite Man. I'm not gonna lie, my money's on Kite Man. I think it would depend where the fight is taking place. Um, because Kite Man has, you know, well, Armless Tiger Man is, you know, a Nazi from the 40s. His knowledge of the world will be quite dated. Um, he won't know, you know, how different like gadgets or, you know, modern weaponry will work. Um, whereas Kite Man, he's got all that to his advantage. He's got, um, you know, modern equipment. Um, um, Kite Man also has the advantage of um, mobility. <laughs> um, he can, I mean, first of all, he can fly or like soar, I guess. Um, but also he can like, I mean, it sounds horrible to say, but you know, he does have full control of his limbs. And yeah, and what, what f***ing powers does Armless Tiger Man have? I'm pretty sure he is just a guy. And Kite Man is just a guy, but like, with a kite. So he, you know, at the end of the day, Kite Man is up one kite, you know? To be fair though, um, I don't think he'll be a f like, okay, let's say it's like this. The Beyonder just plucks Kite Man, and he just gets Armless Tiger Man, and just puts them, he just puts them in a dome. And the Beyonder's like, I'm bored, just fight or both of your moms, one of your moms is getting it. The loser's mom is getting it, right? <laughs> I think, I'm pretty sure Armless Tiger Man, he's, just, he's a Nazi, so like he's trained, he's a soldier, so he's more physical than Kite Man. Yeah, but, yeah to be fair, I've, I've, I've downplayed him a bit. It says here, um, I mean, I should know this because I, I did a little section a in the video your... about him. But, um, <laughs> yeah, Armless Tiger Man is well skilled in using his teeth and feet in place of his amputated arms um he's got sharpened teeth to use yeah. his weapons and has above average strength allowing him to bend steel with his mouth yeah okay okay hmm this might not be as as easy as i once thought if kite man just was airborne the whole time and managed to, managed to stay that way i think kite man might, might win That's but awesome. kite man is is stupid <laughs> and is susceptible he's just a bit lame so he's susceptible to like I don't know, he could just like fall off. You know, if he hits the ground, Armless Tiger Man gets him, you know, he's and it's hand to hand combat, he's fucked. <laughs> you know? I'm sensing some, like... some Armless Tiger Man bias with you here. No, I no, at the beginning, I even said I think Kite Man would win, but I'm just saying, Armless Tiger Man deserves some credit where where credit can be given. Like, for a guy who yeah, has yeah. no arms, he's yeah. doing it. He's I mean, doing this, is, this is not us condoning, condoning, condoning the course, Nazis here. Of course, but. Dude has some, you know, he has some leverage there. But also, I think Kite Man, if Kite Man really took some time and thought, hmm, I can fly, this guy has no arms, so he can't even swing up and jump and get to me. I could just tucker him out, you know, because... Nah, that would, I think he would probably, like, overestimate uh, himself and and just, like, get a bit cocky. And that would be his downfall. Yeah, that's what we do. Um, because all of his, all of his, um, early defeats in the, in the comics, yeah, in the early Batman comics, it. was just him being, thinking he's totally got this, and yeah. he's, you know, he's got, his plan is undefeatable, and then, you know, he gets taken out by, like, some, some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually true. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, so, maybe almost Tiger Man would win. I mean, there's, there's no sure way to know, really. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to see that. I mean, how old, like, how old is Armless Tiger Man? Like, when was his first appearance? You know, at, at the end, at the end of the day, canonically, Armless Tiger Man is dead. He's dead, yeah. <laughs> and Kite Man's alive. So automatically, Kite Man wins. Kite Man wins because he's not dead. Yeah. Well, I mean, he died one time, but. Oh fuck! Oh, that's true. Well, okay. Um, Kite Man has the advantage of being part of the DC universe, which like is constantly seven, like rebooting. 17, more than seventeen years, like every five years. Let's be real. Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. I mean, there's, there's always many reboots every, like, five years, but then there's, yeah. like, um, huge reboots every, like, I don't know, 15, 20 years. Yeah. 
especially with DC. DC's all over the place. Yeah, I mean, you say that like like Marvel hasn't. I mean, For you sure. know, Marvel they just up so much continuity, yeah. um, and, and Secret Wars did nothing to simplify that. So, <laughs> if anything, it made it more complicated. So. Yeah, Marvel just complicates it, but then DC is just like, okay, we're restarting it. We're gonna give it a new name. Uh, here's here's Rebirth. Or oh, you don't like Rebirth? Okay, here's New Fifty Two. But yeah, yeah. No but it's likes. like, but a lot of the stuff is still like canon anyway. Like it still happened yeah. the same, just like a little bit differently. Um, or like they have, if there's too much continuity, they'll just be like, uh, Superboy Prime punched a hole and in, in, in the fabric of reality, and that's that that's why there's so many potholes. <laughs> yeah. You've been working on reviving Alexander and Jacob, and I've that's made true. I've made some comics too, and I know it's it's hard, it's really hard. So, what do you think your like your biggest struggles have been, and how have you like dealt with them, like you know, to improve your process? I think um, accepting that you just like suck <laughs> when you when you're first like making stuff. Having never like made like a proper, honestly, I made comics like all my life as a kid, but they're not like to the standard that I'd want to like publish anywhere like in my name now. Um, so trying to make something that is like good and, and respectable, and it, it's very frustrating because I can't do that, or I can't, or at least I couldn't do that when I started uh, started out. Yeah. Um, and just finding out like you know, okay, I'm gonna use my my disadvantage, just to my advantage you know i'm you know i can't really draw that well so i'm gonna you know turn that into its own style it's gonna be like kind of purposely shit a bit but in the style of like a, a you know a kid's drawing um you know a bit like charlie and lola or something like um unironically i was inspired by the charlie and lola style um, <laughs> but um yeah and then keep it on going even though i know it kind of sucks and just accepting okay this is gonna suck i just need to get something done so i've got like a, a ground base yeah. And then I can come back and like you know slowly improve it. Um, I didn't take my own advice um, because in one of my videos I said I was talking about like um, the importance of like deadlines or setting yourself a deadline. And I was like, I'm setting myself a deadline. I'm just gonna make something or whatever. Um, and then you know even if it's bad, at least I'll have something and I'll, I'll have something to release. So I've got proof that I'm doing something. Um, and then I just didn't do it <laughs> because I thought I'm in no way ready for this. Um, and then you know I had other stuff going on that, that you know I didn't have time to complete it or like whatever. So I have spent I, I I've spent quite a lot of time working on it. Um, I spent the better part of what six months trying to trying to make the first storyline or story arc or something. Yeah, it's I, it's been a constant like cycle of rebirth where I'm just constantly uh, reinventing stuff and then scrapping you know what I have and being like oh no that wouldn't work so uh, you know but it's th this one particular plot point that I hate is tied to so many other things so I need to completely start over and it's just yeah it's a it's a complete mess but I have used what I've learned in like um writing classes or like online tutorials or just like you know fucking YouTube videos and stuff or just by watching other stuff or reading other stuff and I think something solid is finally coming together I think once it's done I'm not going to advertise it everywhere um, one, because it will be still kind of bad relative to like my potential, like what I could be making in like a year's time if I just keep improving. So I don't want my like early mistakes to be very visible <laughs> to everyone. Um, and also I think it's, you know, very unfair if, if I just use my audience to, to just boost this other, you know, this side career, I suppose. Um, when so many other like webcomic artists, you know, struggling away and they, they yeah. don't have this big YouTube audience to just, you know, throw in and get like a bunch of, of views and likes and, and exposure and all that. But yeah, so I'm going to I'm going to take it slow and and small and let barely anyone know about it. Maybe a couple people on Twitter, yeah. a few people on Twitter so I can just get some regular feedback and then, a, you know, build it up into its own thing um, where people independent of my YouTube channel and their investment in my in my YouTube stuff. I can build up a, a, a viewer base independent of my other stuff. Speaking of Jacob, do you still talk to the real life Jacob who the character is inspired of? And does he even know like that a million well, I say a million because the video has a million views, but like a million people have heard of his name and heard of all the the crimes he's committed. To that second part, I don't know. Um, I still, I mean, I still, um, I, he's not like my, you know, my best friend or anything. Yeah. Um, I do see him occasionally, 
um, because he's still friends with um, my, you know, we, we just, you know, we went to different universities and, um, you know, we were, I don't want to say like separated in high school, but like, you know, we weren't, we weren't, we weren't in the same like group or, or like nation or whatever that you get divided up in, into high school. Yeah. So we weren't in any classes and, you know, we just kind of drifted apart, whatever. It wasn't like anything happened or anything. Funnily enough, um, a lot of the stuff that was in that video, like a lot of the the, the images, like the com- the actual comics, um, I got because um, years later, you know, we hadn't talked in ages. Um, he j- he was I saw him in school, and he was like, "Oh yeah, I've got something for you." And it was this notebook like full of of drawings and stuff because that he had just just had in his house, and he was going to clear them out. And he you know was collecting dust for years, and he was like, "Oh, I don't know if you want this back or something." And I was like, "Yeah, cool." Um, and a lot of that, you know, if I didn't have that, if you didn't give me that, then I probably couldn't have made that video. I mean, maybe like 90% of the comics I made yeah. are, are just gone. Um, one, because I either destroyed them, or two, they just, you know, I gave them to Jacob and, you know, he did his mum threw them out or like whatever. But yeah, I, I, yeah, maybe he knows. <laughs> maybe not. Uh, I'll just let that happen. Fate will decide. Or I get really drunk and I'm like, hey man, uh, uh, you know, we're famous or something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm interested, what kind of videos do you watch on YouTube and do you have any like channel recommendations for people who are watching? That's gonna sound a bit depressing, but like when you make YouTube um, videos, you kind of, the magic's kind of lifted, like you get to see all the the tricks and that people deploy to like, um, for like audience retention or like, you know, yeah, the magic's gone. So like when I'm watching stuff, I'm picking up on like, oh, this this person's mic quality or, or this person's, you know, the way they've structured this video or like wh- whatever. Um, it's like, um, you know, it's like if you study film and then you watch a movie, you can't like watch a movie. Yeah, you um, you're seeing all the different cuts and, yeah. and the rhythm and you're like, okay, um, this is all the different beats in the screenplay and, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, there are very few people like I will drop everything to watch a video. I think one would be uh, CJDX. Um, they make very very good videos like video essays some about marvel some about like spider-man stuff some about just random shit, um yeah. that even if you have no idea about you know you can you can still totally get something from it and totally understand their videos piss me off <laughs> because they're so good and um they you know they they'll call out people for like uh, or youtubers for doing stuff um like you know all the typical youtuber stuff like you know, clickbaiting and um, yeah. uh, saying stuff like, oh, leave a comment if you do this and blah, blah, blah. I mean, like, that's, you know, that's bad. That's just for the algorithm and all that. You should really be trying to authentically communicate with your audience and, yeah. and all that. And I feel bad because I'm like, oh my, you know, when they're saying all these things in the videos, I'm like, I've done these things. Oh my <laughs> God. Um, they probably hate me. It's just like forced me to improve my own videos because I'm like, you know, if CJDX ever saw my videos, I'd want, I'd want them to be like, you know. That's, yeah, like. Yeah. So I, I'm, so in a way, it's good because um, because I, I'm just forced to keep like improving, and not be satisfied with uh, the stuff I'm doing and, and keep going. Um, but then I'm at the same time I'm like, oh my god, CJ the X fucking hates me. In terms of other YouTube channels, obviously um, there's people I'm friends with like implicitly pretentious, um, makes really good stuff. Uh, it's also one of my friends' uh, relatively new channel, uh, uh, Lumi's Web or Lumi's Web. I, I, he never told me how to pronounce it, but he, I think he's cool with both. Um, or he was previously Kumo's web, but he he uh, <laughs> he rebranded because with his accent it sounds like he's saying Kumer, um, which is just not like what you want as a brand. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, you know, all these all these um, comic people, you know, um, Owen likes comics, blah blah blah. Um, yeah. Who I mean, me and me and Owen have a have a in joke that he technically created me so if i ever if i ever it would lead to his downfall it would be very like poetic i watch my own videos sometimes yeah <laughs> I watch my older videos and be like that sucked do you ever laugh at your own videos like sometimes like that like, you know like when you're editing you don't laugh but you might just be watching i don't know videos May- sometimes I, there's a couple like maybe jokes that i make they're just so stupid that i can't help but laugh like a year later um but a lot of it is just like pain of just being like oh my god did i did i think this was like how did I think this was acceptable to upload at the time? Yeah. If you can't remember your old stuff, you're not going to like improve from it. You're not going to know exactly what you need to improve. The only exception is my first couple of videos, I think, or my first video. I just can't watch. Yeah. Um, not because not because it's partic- uh, particularly bad or embarrassing, but you know, as you as you grow or like, say, if you got a chance to meet your yourself in 2021 or 2020, for example, you'd probably hate them. 
Um, yeah. And that's not because they're they're a terrible uh, terrible person, but it's just because you know as you grow, you, you're just inherently embarrassed by your past self. Um, and it just so happens that my past self, you know, has a very public library, and <laughs> documenting how I thought and how I spoke and uh, you know and everything. Um, but yeah, like, have you um, been that big of a fan of like the Spider Verse films, or like were they just like they were cool to you, but like they never really like were a big impact or as big like as I mean, impacts of people. It, I, I haven't like talked about them really because obviously like they're just the greatest films ever yeah. <laughs> me saying they're good would add nothing to the conversation yeah. like uh, of course like you know if, if i if i tweeted out or i made a video being like into the spider verse is epic it's like yeah Everyone's obviously uh, yeah. I, I, mean, I think you've made a video um i did like that. bro i, I, um, I yeah, saw so, like, it and i just said i, I can't help myself yeah because it's really good yeah <laughs> um but i just you know for me personally like you know i think I mean, part of it, I think, is I start to slowly hate anything that I like. I make a video about if I've made it, you know. Yeah, um, a lot. I, I'm lucky with it, with it, with this Batman video because because Batman is like relatively like new to me. Um, but you know, making like Spider-Man video after Spider-Man video, um, it does. I do kind of start to resent it a bit, um, yeah. which is why it's good to like take breaks from it. And you know, it's why I don't constantly turn out Spider-Man videos. Yeah. So so if I was to make a video about like Spider Verse. I just, you know, I'd prefer to just have, you know, my my own opinions and my own, my own feelings about that film just to myself, yeah, and just be like, not to take away from the experience that I had, because um, yeah, it's it's amazing, I mean, obviously. Yeah. It's, it's, I think it's you know, the the Across the Spider Verse when that came out a couple of months ago it was just, you know, one of my favorite cinema experiences it, yeah. ever because it was just so creative and yeah, and, yeah even 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 as I'm saying this, it just sounds re redundant because it's like yeah, everyone knows it's great. Um, the the fucking canon event bullshit like memes. It was funny at first, but yeah. like, they will really run that into the ground. I know, dude. Someone spoiled the movie for like screening that was happening like, next to us, and I felt so bad for them <laughs> because he was mad. There was no post credit scene. That's. I need to um get another opinion on this. Which show um is better, Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul? Oh, you fucking bitch. Um. <laughs> We no, we we did talk about this, right? Before. Yeah, we, we did. I don't think I got a concrete answer though. It's hard. It's a hard answer. Okay. Very hard. Um, I would say, I mean, I said it, I said this to you before. I think <laughs> Vesicle Saul is uh, obviously they are you know they are very different shows. Um, yeah. Breaking Bad is is an incredible show with you know drugs and guns and action scenes and intense stuff. And Better Call Saul manages to achieve the same level of, of drama and, and investment through, you know, suing an old person's home for the first season or something. Um, I don't. I can't like, especially it's the same with Andor. People, when people say, "Oh, you know, it sucks because it's slow and boring and there's no guns and and stuff," and it, it's like, I can't I can't write that off because when I watched Better Call Saul season one for the first time, like I watched it all like in the car or something on my phone, which is not the best yeah. um, way to consume it. But I did, you know, I did kind of half give up on it because I just thought like, "Oh, nothing's happening and and all that." Yeah. Once you once the whole thing's laid out in front of you, I think it was about season four um, that I, I I reached. That, that was when I was watching it as it was coming out. Um, I, I reached that point, so I rewatched the whole series with with those um, three or four seasons out, and I was like, oh, I get it now. Like you know, yeah. seeing where it's going and, and knowing like what happens, you can just like pick up on, on the details. It's the same reason I love Andor. These like prequel shows, in particular. Okay, you know where they're gonna end up. What has to happen in someone's life? For them to to end up like that, yeah. um, how do they go from a respectable, like you know, law-abiding system? Like, what ha what has to happen in their life, or what opportunities do they have to have missed out on, or um, what is the influence that that their family and friends can have on them to turn them into this person? And yeah, it's I mean, Barack Obama's really fucking good. Um, yeah. Breaking Bad, though, yeah, it's impossible. It's like um, it's not that it, you're you know you're trying to pick between your your children at all but it's like yeah but it's like they're just you know, they are just very different it's a cop answer but they are yeah. just very different in what they do better call saul leaves a lot of payoff until the end until the final season where breaking bad there are a lot more opportunities for payoff um yeah. it's like sprinkled about i don't know i think also with like the ending i think people tend to prefer the breaking bad ending because it's more yeah, of like a traditional like ending and that everything gets resolved and um, whereas better call saul is just a very unique like yeah. you know very suited to the show even though um, I did say I think Better Call Saul's better, I will say this: my favorite character to come out of like the whole like I guess you could say universe of the series is my favorite character is still Jesse from like still by far out of all of them. Even though I do prefer 
that's cool soul. I, uh, well, I mean, El Camino is kind of like the... I liked it because of yeah. how like reserved it was. It wasn't just like, all right, we're going to revisit all the... Yeah, they didn't do like, uh, all the... Bring, we're going we're gonna to have yeah. all the characters. It was just like a very just... Yeah. You know, a very just bittersweet kind of... I expected so I don't much want to say like service. nothing-y, but like... Yeah, it was just, it was just like, look, just gonna do this and there's gonna be he's gonna have to fight some characters that you've never seen before um but it's just like it just focused like more thematically on like resolving stuff rather than like you know interpersonally like yeah. um it, there wasn't like, like jesse has to track down his his um the guy that showed up in season two and he's gonna start a band and he's gonna yeah. you know <laughs> he's gonna make the best he's gonna finally get to 100 percent pure meth and uh, you know it's that. a road trip movie um <laughs> I respected El Camino like for like how creative um, it was, like the way they filmed it. I, I saw some behind the scenes stuff about how they storyboarded it as well. I, I think like the way they um, came about to just create the film. Oh yeah, it Tenic great. technically it's amazing. Um, I, I looked at a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Um, yeah. I listened to like a lot of podcasts on like because it was just the sa it was the same crew. Yeah. Um, and it was the it was a television crew, and they you know they hadn't really made a film before. I think so. Just hearing like how they got used to it, yeah. and. Um, like that overhead and just shot how, like, what Jesse is searching Todd's apartment. Oh, Fantastic. oh yeah, that's brilliant. Oh that's brilliant. Yeah, and I think of, it's not. I don't want to use the phrase like style over substance, but I think yeah. they did focus a lot. I think it works like really technically well. Um, I think it's like kind of missing something like like story wise or yeah. like it feels kind um, of whatever. It's not like not irrelevant i'd say but more just it didn't so like it's, it's a nice thing end. it's just a nice thing to, to to add on to the end you know you yeah. don't need to watch it but if you want to have some resolution with jesse you know you, you know uh, yeah. i mean everyone says just treat it as the last couple episodes of breaking bad you know yeah for real yeah and my last question is where like do you see yourself and the channel in the future Mm, another question that I've never heard before and that we have not discussed previously. <laughs> um, um, I'd say, I mean, yeah, again, I'll try, I'll try and simplify my, my answer I told you the other day. Um, I think you see channels on YouTube that are like, they've been going for years and years and they're just making the same kind of content and, the, and they're, they're clearly, their heart's not in it anymore and it's just like a slow death. I mean, really, you can just see their numbers are starting to slip, you know, their passion is starting to slip. Um, I don't want that to happen to me. Um, I'd like to just leave, you know, leave on a high note, I guess. Unless I, 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 I don't really know what will happen, but I don't see myself in five years having the same passion, having done the same thing for five years, you know. Yeah. Um, so unless I can like dramatically reinvent myself every couple years, um, yeah, I'd like to just, you know, I'd like to make one big last video that's like, you know, I, I've said all I need to say. Um, I don't think I can add more value to the, to the comics space i guess or spider-man space or whatever um and just be like yep he, you know this was me i made youtube videos i'd like to, you know i'd like to be doing something else like you know may, if the comics thing works out the web comics thing um that would be great i'd love to do that yeah. um and yeah just uh, i don't want to like jump ship i don't want to be like all right i'm doing comics now everyone just uh f you know follow me there and, and you know uh, thanks for the you know thanks for the views suckers um <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah. I wanna, I wanna leave behind a solid like catalog of just like, but like, I mean, I'm not trying to compare myself to every frame of painting, but every frame of painting found, uh, you know, made very good videos, and then just found a, a point to to stop. There were, um, I think it was it was two guys that were doing it, or or two people. Um, they were just like, okay, we've said all we needed to say. Um, there you go. We'll we'll just have these online forever. There's like, I don't know, like sixteen something videos and it's just there you go yeah. see ya <laughs> so I, I would kind of like to have that where i'm just like okay i haven't you, you know go, gone out on a high note i haven't um slept in terms of quality and trying not to let my passion burn out um yeah. or at least stop before it does yeah this has been a good talk this has been a very good interview man how's it <laughs> i don't know i feel like i've just been like waffling um for like as uh, how fucking long have we been going for like uh, an hour or something oh shit. Oh, God. You might need to cut it down. Um, Fuck, I didn't record this. You didn't record this? <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. Damn.
I was thinking. About I was gonna say that's actually that's that kind of a blessing in that's kind of a blessing in disguise because um I could have just done the whole thing again but like slightly shorter and like. Well, this has been fun. Uh, it's been no, it's been really cool. I mean, I've never done something like this before, yeah. um, which is why, at least towards the start, I was probably like really shit. Um, <laughs> no, it's um, I hope s some people find it cool yeah. or interesting or something. I guess you'd have to be like a fan of my channel. You go fan. I guess. You got fans. I uh, I got I got fans that will come in waves to this to this video. No. <laughs> Do you have anything to say to the viewers before this ends? The Taffy's world. The Taffy's world viewers. Um. My fandom. This is going on my fandom. Wing. Um. Oh god. That, that, <laughs> don't put me in the spot. Um. Uh. Make sure to like and subscribe to to Taffy's world and, and stay tuned for some some animations and some videos on why on why Jesse Pinkman is the most broken character. Yep, part two coming 2024. The tragedy, the real tragedy of Jesse, the rise and fall of Jesse Pinkman. April first, 2024. That's, a, that's what that's what that's what that's what you want. You want um rise and fall. That's that's what you really want in a in a title and thumbnail that'll get clicks. Yeah, I'll do a 24 hour long upload. All right, no, it's been it's been it's been really cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank um, thank it. you for the opportunity. Yeah. No, thank so, you. Totally. I hope it wasn't too boring. Thank you yeah. so much, man. No problem, man. Thanks. See you next time on Taffy's World. And there you guys have it. That's the end of the Alex Lennon interview. This has been really fun to make, and this also is technically my longest video, because if you put these two projects together, then you'll realize that, hey, this video is basically an hour long. So I'd really appreciate if you would, you know, share the video, like the video, subscribe to both of our channels, because I think it taught us both a lot. Also, Alex Lennon is going to be releasing the long-awaited revival of Alexander and Jacob, which he mentioned in the interview very soon soon i think so make sure to be ready for that when it comes out because you know i'll be ready for it and also thanks for 5,000 subscribers i think i've said this multiple times but uh, i really do appreciate it also here's a sneak peek of my next short film okay bye